Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's been about two weeks since I posted. I have been moving around, just like trying to figure out where I want to be as far as like recording these videos. So you'll see some back different backgrounds in my videos in the coming weeks. Typically I record in like our living room area. Now I'm in our guest bedroom. I'm just trying to see what fits best as far as lighting, sound, and just all my equipment because it takes a lot <laughs> to record these videos, to set up my tripod, to get the camera out. And then aside from YouTube videos, I also have a photography business. So I'm just trying to make sure I'm in like a good place to where I have enough room to edit the photos and shoot Instagram reels and make YouTube shorts. So I created this Spain itinerary and that's what this video is all about today. I make an itinerary whenever I go anywhere to travel that's outside of the city that I'm currently living in and I think these itineraries are so helpful. I always just lay them out in this format of like to do, to eat, um, things to see and I think it helps me really just have a great time in that city that I'm exploring whether it be the first time or me returning to it. I'm really able to make sure I go and do everything I want to do while I'm there. So let me show you the Spain itinerary. So this is how it looks on my phone. If you see me looking down at all on my cam on my phone, uh, that's because I am just reading from my notes to make sure that I don't miss anything. You all can use the link in the description to see this itinerary yourself and you can make a copy of it and save it to your own Google Drive so that you can just make your own edits to it. Um, once you make a copy of it, you can also send it to people and share it there and they can give their comments on it as well. Okay, so for this document, it's Spain trip 2023. That is when I took the Spain trip. If you decide to take it, I would say later on this year or next year, just double check with a lot of these locations to make sure they're still open. I don't see them closing at all, but we did not think COVID was going to happen. We also didn't think COVID was going to close down so many establishments and it did. So I would hate for something like that to happen again. And then you go there years from now and this itinerary is not good or does not have the stores that are open on them. So check it out. I did 10 days in Spain and I went from Madrid to Barcelona. And on this itinerary, I mentioned the 10 days, I mentioned the two cities, and I even mentioned the time zone because when I'm planning out trips, I like to see what time zone they're going to be in. Uh, am I going to be getting hungry at a time when I should really be sleeping? And just like how to really kind of plan my days out when it comes to like timing wise. So when we landed there, we landed at 7 a.m. and I was so tired. I slept one hour on the flight. So that first day there, we checked into the room and just slept most of the day. Um, the time zone is, is really killer. <laughs> When it comes to going to Spain, I don't think there's a way around it. <laughs> I've seen so many articles where people say like, the trick is to just not sleep your first day there so that you can get used to it. I think if I would have done that, I would have passed out from fatigue. Like I really was so tired when I landed. I don't think there's a way to beat jet lag. <laughs> so that's that. And so in this itinerary, you see it is a six hour difference from here in Ohio. If you're traveling from somewhere else, look into that time zone difference. It's also good to know just because while you're over there and you're going, you're going to be calling your family maybe that's in the States and checking in on them, you don't want to call them at, I don't know, 10 p.m. your time because they might be, you know, deep in sleep <laughs> by the time they get your call. So be really mindful of the time difference. I lay out suggested stays on the itinerary and this, these are the two hotels that I stayed at while there. So in Madrid, we stayed at the Hyatt Centric Gran Via, and it was an amazing experience. I am absolutely just, I definitely would stay there again. And same with the other hotel too. I guess that's why I suggest them because I really liked my stay. And mind you, I'm not getting any type of promotion for, you know, telling you all about them or anything like that. Like I genuinely liked the hotels I stayed at. The Hyatt Centric Gran Via in Madrid is like in the middle of the city, it has everything around it. We just were really in awe with how great the location was. There was like shopping right outside. There was places to eat at. It was walking distance to everything that we wanted to do. And so um, for that reason, I say it is a suggested stay. You have the convenience of travel. 
you have the safety feature because of how like crowded the place is it did feel safe and it was just a really really pretty hotel too the hotel we stayed at in barcelona is the hilton diagonal mar that one was right off of the beach we had to do maybe like a five or less minute walk to the beach you could see people on their boats and it was just really beautiful the hotel itself had a restaurant in it and that restaurant is michelin rated i'm not sure how many stars but it is rated we didn't get to check it out we honestly looked at the menu and like we didn't think it looked that good not for like the prices so we didn't check it out but if you're into checking out like Michelin star rated restaurants when you travel, then definitely stay here and check out the restaurant that's on the bottom floor because maybe you'll like it. Maybe it's to your liking. Suggested airlines. So I have only taken, taken one trip uh, that's been overseas and it was this one to Spain and we flew American Airlines. So I, I cannot really compare the flight experience to anything else because it was my first really long flight over water and uh so for that like yes i suggest using american airlines but take that with a grain of salt because i have nothing else to compare it to i enjoyed my experience i will say like i think i was expecting it to go a lot worse i was expecting to have like an anxiety flare-up <laughs> and like you know being stuck in the airplane for so long was just going to be so bad for me I didn't know what to expect for food, I didn't know what to expect for drinks on the plane, I didn't know what to expect for the seat sizes either, but I was a fan of American Airlines, mind you. The first flight there, we sat all the way in the back of the plane, we didn't pay for any upgrades, way in the back. I was fine, but I'm also 5'2"-ish, 5'3", when I'm lying. <laughs> And I weigh about like 120-ish pounds on a good day. <laughs> uh, so I fit in the seats very well. Dion is 6'2", and I have no idea how much he weighs. But he's like a, you know, a bigger guy. And so he hated the, the experience on the way there. He like hated the seats, said they were so small. He hated the way people were sitting and like blocking the both sides of the uh, arm stool things. So, yeah, take, take that for what you will. On the way back, we did upgrade and have our seats in like the middle area of the plane, and Dion loved it. Like he had no row in front of him. He just had like this, like all this leg space in front of him. I felt fine once again. The seats were okay. Like, and then the food, the food was good. I have a whole vlog about how the actual plane ride went so please go check it out that on there explains like what the food looked like um the monitors in the airplane and all the movies that i was able to watch i i'm telling you i had a good time i cannot compare it to anything else so i don't know if my review of the airline is that good but i think it went well and i'm going to take american airlines again in the fall when i go to london so suggested airline is american airlines <laughs> all right in the itinerary the next section we have is transit and for transit i was probably most nervous for aside from like the long flight because i am from ohio and we don't have you know we're not really known for having good public transportation in ohio and i think in the u.s in general so with transit i'm actually so proud of us and how we figured it out so in my notes i have that you take the metro from madrid uh, airport to Hyatt centric. It is the easiest ride ever I would say. The only bad thing is if you have big suitcases just be really ready to carry those up a lot of stairs. There's stairs everywhere in Europe and nothing else screams tourists like having big suitcases with you and having to you know get them all up there without an elevator. When you're using the metro use the transit app this app I use a lot when I was in New York. It's a green app and it is just a great help. The only bad thing is it's hard to keep signal once you're underground. So calculate your route above ground uh, and have it all the way ready to go, like calculating out your route. Get on the train and once you're on the train, like don't touch your screen. <laughs> don't exit out of the app. Don't refresh the screen because your signal is going to go out and then the transit app might not work as well. And that's the same, not just in Europe, but when I was in New York, it's the same thing. You want to make sure you stay on the app. We ended up buying a five-day pass for the Metro, and it was around 35 euros, 
we didn't even use it because Hyatt centric Gran Via was like walking distance to everything. The only time we took the metro was from the airport to the hotel. So definitely more affordable than an Uber or and or Lyft. Actually they only have one of them there. But we didn't take any of those there. So so I would say if you're gonna go over there, just be familiar with uh, the transit app and metro and using that and be okay with riding in taxis because we did ride taxis. We took the Ren Fee train. I don't even know if I'm saying that correctly, but it's the Ren Fee train. <laughs> that train was about, I think, 2.5, 3-ish hours from Madrid to Barcelona, and I booked that through the Omeo app. I had no clue how to book this, and I went, and we got there to Madrid, and Dion looked at me and was like, so, like, what, what's the train information? I'm like, I don't have... I don't I haven't booked it yet. I thought we could just go to like the station and buy it. And he's like, we probably need to get that in advance. <laughs> so I was like looking everywhere. And finally, I commented on this YouTuber's channel that had a video about the rent fee. And I said, like, how did you book? And she told me about the Omeo app. And so I downloaded it and everything just made sense from there. I have a whole, I think, YouTube short about it. And that YouTube short actually shouts out the YouTuber that helped me figure it out. So go check out the Omeo app. Okay, the next section is to do. So to do in Madrid, to do in Barcelona. I have a couple items listed there and I think I explained kind of like what they are or you can kind of get the gist of it. One of them that I didn't get to do in Madrid that I really wanted to do was the architecture tour. I am such a fan of architecture and I really wanted to go to it. I booked it and then it was raining and luckily he let me cancel with like no problem. So go book with him. Um, it's something that I really wish I could have done. Something that we did do in Madrid that I think I could go without is the San Miguel market. It was like super populated. I didn't think any of the items in there looked like that good to eat and pick up. And there's so many scammers outside it that don't leave you alone. Like they're like hounding you. So I definitely could have gone without San Miguel Market. In Barcelona, the rooftop tango lesson. I think myself and Dion didn't know how much fun we were going to have there, but it was a blast. Tango has nothing to do with Spain. <laughs> and they go over that in there. And it was just a great time meeting other people. Like we took group pictures and everything and got some really cute videos of us dancing. Something I could do without ever doing again in Barcelona is the windsurfing. I put it on the itinerary because I, I didn't want to just like leave stuff off. I wanted to tell you everything that we did there. But the windsurfing experience, I didn't like it for several reasons. I don't think they explained how to windsurf that well. I also was not strong enough to pull up the parasail part of it. I could stand on the board just fine, but just could not pull up that part. And we had to walk on these rocks. There was rocks all along the beach. So take shoes, wear your water shoes, because the rocks like tore Dion's feet up. I felt so bad. Beaches in Barcelona. Amazing. I loved them. I loved the one close to the hotel. It was walking distance and it was very chill. There wasn't a lot of people there. There's the Barceloneta beach and that one was packed with people. A lot to do when it comes to water sports. So I ha left it on there in case that's like your crowd. Food and drinks. For food and drinks, chocolates. Mark Waynes, the YouTuber on YouTube. <laughs> The food blogger on YouTube, I watched his video and I think he gave me a lot of the recommendations of like where I was going to go when I'm in Spain. And I will say, chocolate, it is good churros. And I think he even says in his video, they're not churros like Mexico churros. They are Spaniard churros. They're not very sweet at all. Was it a good experience to go try Spaniard churros? Yes, it was. So go. Would I go again? I don't know. <laughs> I'd probably go again if I had new people with me and I wanted them to try and have that experience, but I don't know if I would be like itching to go again. Sobrino de Butin. I think I'm saying that right, but not all the way. Sure. This restaurant is one of the oldest restaurants in, and it's in the Guinness World Record for that. And it's mentioned in a book by Hemingway. So it is an exciting thing to go do. I think Dion liked his food more than I liked mine. I think for me, it was just like the aesthetic of being in like 
one of the world's oldest restaurants and just seeing the architecture outside and indoors and like it was really cool to see it like I wish I would have gotten more recordings of the inside of it but the doors were like so short <laughs> the the sinks were like just so different I just had one more thing to really talk about and it is the bar Paradiso Paradiso and it is in Barcelona it is rated I think it's the world's best bar of 2022 and Reservations are not made in advance and I have that on the itinerary because you want to make sure you show up Scan the QR code at the front door or just get an actual physical line and I think in total maybe it took us like 40 minutes to get in and we sat at the bar Which I do recommend sitting at the bar if you're gonna visit the world's best bar so that you can kind of see what goes into making of the drinks And it was an amazing experience. I would definitely go back and I think anyone that goes to Barcelona needs to check out this bar so that is my itinerary for Spain. I hope you all can go. I hope you can check it out and use this itinerary. Like I said, make a copy of it. And if you have questions, just drop it in the video and I can respond there. But I definitely think Barcelona, Madrid, and even the day trip to Toledo that I have on this itinerary, it was all just really great. I'm happy I went. I would go back. I would move there. <laughs> I liked it so much. So definitely check out the itinerary and I wish you all the best luck in planning your future travels. Thanks for watching.